This video is long overdue, a review of the 2023 Open. The reason I want to get this video out today is because tomorrow, myself, Coach Helen, Gareth Hodgson and Gareth Lloyd take part in the age group online quarterfinals. We managed to make the top 10% in the world for our age category and we will be representing CrossFit Children in a series of five workouts taking place Saturday and Sunday. If you want to come and watch, we'll be doing the workouts at approximately, and this is very approximate, um, 12.30 till 3 on Saturday and probably somewhere around 9.15 until 11.30 on Sunday. Feel free to come along and uh, support, heckle, whatever you like. So first of all, I want to talk about the workouts that came in the 2023 Open and what you should take from them. This Open this year was quite different from previous years. If you weren't aware, it was programmed by a different person. All the previous Opens had been programmed by a guy called David Castro. This year, it was taken over by a guy called Adrian Bosman. And his pro style of programming is different to what we've had in previous years. So some of you may have noticed that your scores this year might have deteriorated from last year. So maybe your placement in the world isn't as high this year as it was last year. And part of the reason for that, you can definitely attribute to the way the workouts have been programmed this year. In previous years, especially in more recent years, I think maybe in attempt to get the open be more inclusive, the workouts have been more inclusive and more capacity-based. In other words, the weights have been more achievable, the skill work, the higher skill movements have either been left out or moved to later in the workouts. This year, the workouts have often had a series of bottlenecks the way people would get stuck. For example, in workout one, everyone could do a 60 calorie row, then we got to the 50 toaster bar. Some people couldn't get a toaster bar, and if you've only just recently done toaster bars, or which was great to see, lots of you were achieving their first toaster bar in that open workout, you won't be able to get through 50 quick enough to test yourself on the remainder of the workout. So it's a bottleneck with the toaster bar for skill. We then got 40 wall wood, which everyone can do. And then the clean weight, for some of you, would have been particularly heavy. It was 61 kilos, I think it was for the guys, and 43 kilos for the girls. So again, it creates a bottleneck, but also a chance for people to hit maybe a PR on their clean weight. And finally, if you finish those cleans, you then got to the muscle ups, which for some people is a skill they haven't quite developed yet. So again, you could get stuck at that bottleneck. Whereas in previous years, maybe it was something like deadlift and burpees for the first workout and most people do that i think it could be wall walks uh, double under or something of that nature so people could just get through it based on their cardiovascular fitness and endurance or their ability to suffer and they're not tested so much on their skill so there always been a few, a few more bottlenecks workout one workout two was much more of a capacity at burpee pull-ups i know that um, pull-ups can be an issue but i think the standard made it a lot more uh, accessible for people and then you have the, the third or the second part of that workout, which is the one that Max Thrust, which everyone could do, but obviously you can take a big hit with that being 25% of the workout score. So if you haven't got particularly good thruster, overhead strength, and coming out of the squat, then yeah, you're going to take a big hit in a leaderboard of you know 150,000 people. One kilo can make all the difference. So that that does also push a lot of people down the leaderboard if they haven't got that thrust away, or conversely, if you have got particularly strong it can push you up thousands of places uh, when that workout comes to 25% of the score. So uh, there is some debate as to whether that is a, they should have that as a valid test as part of the open, one of the strength tests um, attributed to a quarter of the scores. But it is what it is, and that's one of the reasons why maybe your points would have been different this year. And in the final workout, loads of you will know it was short and it had a massive uh, bottleneck in there. And that could have been the wall walks for some of you. Uh, for a lot of you, that was the snatch. So please have a look at your performance and don't consider it like for like year on year because in, in some ways it's a bit of a apples and oranges comparison and they're very different workouts. I know it's different year on year, but I think this year was particularly noticeable in how it happened. That being said, I will say that as always, the Open didn't fail to deliver or delivered, I should say, on its excitement on its ability to build us as a community and for us to be able to see some amazing PRs in workouts. And that's the great thing about the open workouts is they are tests as opposed to our regular daily workout. And what that means is that 
you are forced to go either to the scaled weight and scaled skills or the RX weight and RX skills. And therefore you're forced to do things that perhaps in a workout we wouldn't advise you to do. So if there was 50 toes to bar in a workout and we know that you can only do, you have never done toes to bar before, we probably wouldn't get you doing toes to bar in a workout. But in the test, you have to do it. And yes, it may be affected if there was a particular stimulus in one of that workout, we wouldn't get you to do that because you would miss out all the other components of this workout. In this experience or in this instance, it helps to get you, force you to do those things. The same with the weights. I know lots of people um, did far more clean, far more statues than they expected just by being forced into going to a heavier weight than they would always try. A lot of people get stuck in a weight that they always use for clean, but the weight they always use for statues, the weight they always use for deadlifts in a Metcon. And sometimes it is good to be forced into something different. The same with your wall walk, being forced to go all the way into the wall, and the same with any other movement that came up. It's a great way to test yourself. Always come away with the open with a plan or a motivation of how you're going to get better for next year. But don't think about what held you up this year and what you can do to move forward. So if it was the weight, maybe you're going to look at some of the lifting track that comes with the, the CrossFit affiliate program. Maybe take some time in the open gym slots or come in um, and work on your strength. If you're one of these lucky members with a uh, gym in their house, you can do that, but maybe you want to work on your strength, or maybe you want to spend some more time working on the skills that you can do, maybe stringing toes to bars together for an issue. That could be a, a strength base in your hip flexors, your abs, or it just might be you're lacking a uh, small component of the skill aspect there. The same for muscle ups and uh, all, all those other things. Double unders could be another issue. Try and look at where you're going to improve and how you're going to focus your efforts to to get a little bit better year upon year. We expect that the programming will follow this same trend every year. So maybe you need to look at things, making sure that you haven't got these holes in your fitness and uh, to get better at for future years. And obviously myself and all the coaches, we actually love it when someone comes and asks for advice, asks for help, because it motivates us to see people trying to get better, just as we as coaches are always trying to do. So don't be afraid of asking those questions, sending emails, whatever you need to do to help you move forward. Now a little review of some of the top performances this year. We're going to talk about the men's and women's division. So in the women's division, Helen Livingston was the top dog here in the box. Then we had uh, Cat Shaw, Ali Bird, Jess Neathan, and Eddie Jordan. And in the men's division, uh, top was Gareth Lloyd, then Jack Bradstreet, James Lee, Gareth Hodgson and Ben Hill, they were the top five members in our box leaderboard. Inside of those performances were some really special performances. We start with the men's side first. Gareth Hodgson finished 14th in the UK for his age category. And in the first workout 23.1, he actually finished 12th in the UK for his age. Gareth Lloyd had a very similar um, series of results. He finished seventh in the UK for his age category. And uh, for workout one, he actually finished 12 uh, in the UK. And Coach Helen had some fantastic performances individually in some of those workouts. In the first workout, she was fifth in the UK 23.1. That's the uh, rowing, toaster bar, all walls, cleans, muscle ups. She was fifth in the UK. And amazingly, in uh, 23.2, she finished second in the UK. And the only athlete to beat her by two reps was Samantha Briggs. I don't know who that is. She won the Games in 2013 and is an incredible athlete still. And Helen also finished 11th worldwide out of her age country for that workout. So a fantastic performance. The other part of the Open that was amazing to watch was how the CrossFit Chilton Team Open panned out. Captains really came together and uh, you could see the captains that really got their team Worked working together to get take part in all the challenges. I love the videos, the photos, the art entries, all the stuff that came through throughout that month. And I especially love the turnout we had for this year's team finals. I'm going to be posting the photos and the videos very soon. Yes, I know it's made. It's taken a long time to get around to this. It's been a very busy month for me, um, and I'm just one man. <laughs> so. 
uh, I will be posting that over the next few days, some images from there, some videos, and some other stuff as we go along. But I want to say a massive congratulations for all of you to a part. The other thing I want to say is that we've been really well our affiliate participation. We managed to get 74 people participate. That was more, my target was 75, um, but that was still our highest participation ever. Let's hope we can grow year on year on move yourself up that UK leaderboard and get into that top 10 of affiliate participation in the UK. Again, big congratulations for all of you taking part. For some of you, this may have been your first sporting competition for a long time, and I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope those of you that were a little bit intimidated or a bit worried about what it entailed, appreciate what you got from the Open and use it as motivation for next year, because we need to keep motivated now um, to push ourselves forward. This is where we start building that base, working on those skills. I call this the off season. Um, you know, basically work on those skills, our strength, our base, and get fitter. We will be retesting the open workouts in September. So in the same uh, style, with the same standards, you can see judges, you can get accurate vision of how you got fitter over the next uh, five, six months. And that will also be used as our qualifier for you. Qualifying for our individual competition, the Limitless Games. Stay tuned for more videos from myself. If you want to again come and watch us at the quarterfinals, then please come along uh, Saturday afternoon. I think it's about 12 to 3 and then Sunday, as I say, somewhere around 9.50 till around 11.30, depending on what the workouts are and how long we take to warm up and recover from these workouts. Always great to see you guys at the box, and it's been a really busy few weeks. Loads of people have been coming on a regular basis, and that is what I want to see. Look forward to seeing a lot of you soon. Take care.